Hey Redbags, today I'm giving you a lowdown on the best flyers in Power World. I'm going to be ranking them in order from worst to absolutely best. And yes, of course, Jet Dragon will be up there, but it takes a good long time to get hold of. So what are you going to be using before then? I know, spoilers, I'll just give you what's number one, but I think most of you have guessed that now since you've been watching and seeing probably lots of videos, or maybe even you've been playing and got one yourself. Anywho, that's what I'm answering today, giving you their sprint speeds, their stamina levels, their usefulness, and some of their extra abilities, and how easy it is to get their saddles. So leave a like if you find this video useful. Let's go, the best flyers in Power World. So there's 17 real flyers in Power World. Not gliders, but ones that can actually get you higher and higher and across big distances. There is a big difference between birds and dragons. Dragons will fall to the floor in water, and so they will have to lose their stamina. Whereas birds, once they fall against water, they'll simply just carry on once they've regained their stam. So that's like a top tip. If you're gonna be going across the water, birds are always better than dragons. Unless the dragon's got quite a large stamina pool, which of course I'm gonna talk about today. We're kicking off with Nightwing. It is obviously the first one that you might come across. You can see here from the heat map in the peaceful plateaus. And if you spawn anywhere else, there's usually one nearby. The saddle is unlocked at level 15, so it is the easiest and earliest one that you'll get, but I still don't think it's necessarily worth your time. They have a gathering of two, so they're not particularly great at work jobs. A basic speed of 600 and sprint speed of 750, they feel really, really slow. They don't even make up for it with their stamina, which is really low at 100. Their neutral powers also don't really do much against most other actual pals. So yes, don't bother wasting your time or resources trying to get one of these. You can still go ahead and use a glider, maybe go ahead and use the grapple, or just avoid cliffs and large spaces until you get a better flyer. They also offer no extra bonuses in terms of breeding. They won't help you get any specific fusion or special powers that you can only get by breeding exactly the right type of pal. And their drops are kind of weak source as well with only leather being dropped when you kill them. The only benefit to these are exactly like I said, they're pretty early on in the game. So if you really want a flyer early, then sure. Number 16, Alpha Dran. These are your first dragons that you might get, probably from eggs that you hopefully would have found, or you might have been lucky enough to take on the boss variant. There's not that many dragons compared to a lot of the other pals, and so they're really useful for against dark enemies. But these guys are only marginally quicker and with more stamina than Nightwing, and I think it's still not maybe necessarily worth your time. But for sure, if you can't wait to get a hold of a flyer or a dragon, then at level 21 it's saddle unlocks, I definitely would pick this over trying to get a Nightwing. They do only spawn naturally in very small mounts in the southern preserve. That's why you're better off trying to get them from an egg or taking on the boss. And the boss isn't too far away, just slightly over to the northwest. Even max to level 50, it's still only doing damage in the 400s. And its work job is lumbering, which is level 2, but still not that useful compared to some of the other pals. I absolutely love the look of this guy. He's kind of cute and a bit derpy, and he does run relatively well, but I still think maybe there's definitely better options out there. Now you will need some of these if you want to get the aqua version. Some variants are definitely stronger than their original counterparts, but with the Alpha Down Aqua, I don't think that's necessarily the case. Yes, it is going to do water damage, which is obviously good, and it has got a water in of level three. So particularly for around the base, combined with deforestation by level two, but I still think it's still relatively weak. They are, however, pretty easy to breed. You just need a regular Elfidan and you'll have to breed it with a Serpent. So if you want some really good waterers early game, then you could certainly try breeding for that reason. But remember, we're here about the flying mostly, and they have obviously the same stats as the regular Elfidan. Killing fire enemies and you get more resources when using the Aqua version. Its saddle is relatively low as well, pretty close to the regular Elfidan, where that was 21, it's 28 if you want to craft a saddle for this guy. I did nearly place this above some of the others though, purely because it is a water tame that can fly. As you might have guessed, a lot of the water pals in Power World, they generally are really slow going across the water. Yes, they don't run out of stamina, etc., but I still think they're relatively useless compared to just getting yourself a good flyer with good stamina or maybe a dragon. So if you do really want a water team that can also get you from A to B a bit quicker and being able to go multi-purpose up to cliffs and stuff, then it could absolutely be worth that investment in breeding. 
Okay, this is where I start upsetting people. This guy is an absolute beast when it comes to fighting other pals. As a flyer, it's kind of weak source. Astagons are slower than the Elphidrans. For that reason, and remember this is about the flying aspect mostly, they are not necessarily worth your time. If you compare it against some of the later game pals, particularly some of the alpha versions or the overworld bosses, he certainly does rank up, but even amongst them, in terms of flying, he is still just relatively way too slow. They've got a very small, tiny chance to spawn in the northeast reserve, or you can go take on the one that exists in the overworld as a boss fight in the lava zone. And its saddle is 47, so clearly not something you're meant to be getting early game. He is of course insanely powerful with his dragon and dark powers. In terms of work jobs, he's actually got level 4 mining, so that actually places him as a pretty decent work creature. And he has a handiwork of 1. So for sure, if you're setting up a mining base where you go and put one of your power boxes near 4 or 5 different nodes, having him in the party will certainly rip through a lot of that much quicker. And if you're using these abilities manually on ore, it's meant to do a lot more damage, but I still find that this method is incredibly slow. He stamina's 300, but you'll find plenty of higher level flyers that have close to that, even if they're not necessarily overworld bosses. His defense stats are okay, but again, still not relatively bigger than some of the last or late game creatures. But you are going to need one of these if you want a shadow beak, because you've got to mate it with a kitson. So when it comes to choosing this guy or trying to go for Jet Dragon, absolutely always go for Jet Dragon. So the best from the early flyers is Van Wim. Its saddle is unlocked at level 21, so the same as the Elfridan. So not even that much faster than an Elfridran with 850 top speed and 700 normal. And stamina at 150, so not too bad. The payoff is though they have slightly lesser health than some of their other counterparts. But from getting you from A to B, they are the quickest out of the starting game ones that you can find. You get level 1 kindling and transport in level 3 with these guys as well. Fire abilities definitely come in handy in early game as there's so many creatures weak against it. And if you learn to use your guns or weapons while riding this guy, you can actually do more damage to an enemy's weak points, i.e. its head. You also need some of these if you want to mate them with an Anubis to go ahead and get a Phalaris, another really powerful late game flyer, or a Van Wim Christ, which you'd also need a Fox Call. That's the variant of this one. But before we get onto them properly, you will find Van Wims all over the lava zone, but actually quite close to the starting zone just in the west. So not very difficult to get hold of, and certainly I would say make a beeline for one of these rather than any of the others. The Ice variant absolutely is powerful, but it is still the same speed, stamina, and sprint speed of a regular Van Wim. It has slightly better shot attack than the regular one. Do you manage to bring some, you're going to get cooling of 2 and transport level 3. But because it is so far in advance that you won't be able to get the saddle for it, that's why I'm placing it relatively early as more of a useless flyer and only slightly above the actual original version. you find them all the way to the north, obviously, in the cold biome. Obviously it does ice damage, but it does have dark too. So yeah, it is a good one for sure. And if you can make that upgrade, if you really want another Van Wim. But by this stage at level 41, you're not going to need this guy's saddle, so it'd be a waste of tech points. I do love the look of this guy, though, with the holographic wings. Next up is Beacon, and at 1200 sprint speed, he's one of the fastest creatures you'll find until much later. His regular speed is still only 750, so still marginally better than the ones we've spoken about, and of course it is a lightning power. Now again, these are pretty rare comparatively in terms of flyers, but by now you probably have found a fair few of maybe the Sparks or other lightning creatures. Its saddle is level 34, and obviously, yes, it's going to do a lot of damage with lightning. The trouble is, it's all the way in the northeast deserts, so not particularly close if you do want to get one of these. And that's why it's slightly lower than some of the other creatures, even though it's going to be faster than some of them. It's just simply a bit more of a hassle to go and get for the level that you are, and there's still other creatures, I think, that just about do the great or similar job, even if they're slightly slower. Generating electricity at level 2, gathering at 1, and transporting a 3, so pretty multi-use. It's got slightly less defence scores than some of the other pals as well, with only level 80 compared to a lot of them being 100. 
So if you want absolutely the fastest power you'll get until you're well into your 40s, then this one is absolutely something you should try and unlock. Otherwise, I would still say maybe focus on the next one I'm about to show you. Oh, and of course, you will do more electrical damage while you're riding on this shooting your weapons. So Hell's Fire, level 33 saddle and a dark pal. Again, these are relatively rare apart from the ones that you get at night time and certainly in flying terms, there's not that many. He's not as fast as Beacon, so why am I putting him ahead? Simply because he's got more stamina and he does have better stats overall with some of the other stuff. The fact that he also does dark as well, and again, not as many pals have that compared to others that might have lightning and more. I sacrifice 100 sprint speed just to get that extra stamina that will allow me to fly even longer. Your attacks are gonna do extra dark damage while you're mounted. This one big letdown is the fact it's only got a transport in of three, and you will have to go and capture one at night time, but again, really close to the starting peaceful plateau. Hellsfire's health is slightly less than Beacon's, but it does have more defense, and its shot attack is better than Beacon's too. And you are gonna need one of these guys if you want to get the variant of Frostallion, as the Frostallion knot requires, obviously, a Frostallion and one of these. So I really like this guy, I kept him and used him for a long, long time until I got to much later. The one negative, it's regular moving speed is quite slow at 700 compared to some of the others. But huge differences in the sprint speed. And with that extra stamina, I think it's a little bit better than Beacon. So at this point, you've probably hopefully got a fly of every kind of element, but I did say the first dragon one that you get was maybe a little bit weak source. Well, how about Quivern? absolutely going to give you that dragon power and a lot of stamina it's not as fast as either beacon or hell's fire but it definitely does have a lot more stamina 230 comparatively to the 160 and 170 of the previous so if you're looking to go across to them preserves then absolutely this guy will get you there pretty much with its stamina pull it's still relatively fast as well you can find quivens in the western preserve or has a mini overworld boss in the northwest of course, you get Dragon Powers while riding it, and it's level 36 saddle. At this stage of the game, you definitely want to get hold of a really good Dragon Mount. You should be exploring a lot more areas that have dark enemies, and that's why it's only ever so slightly ahead of the previous two. And an extra bonus is, it's a jack of all trades. It's got level one handiwork, level three transporting, level two gathering and mining and it can survive on a relatively low amount of food compared to a lot of other pals. Number eight is Ragnarok, with his top speed of 1300, making him the fifth fastest flying pal in the game. So why is he not higher? Because his stamina is garbage at only 150 compared to the rest. So although you'll be able to go fast, you'll have to stop frequently to gain your stamina back. Extra bonus for this guy is his work job and flame level 3 kindling as well as level 3 transporting so if you just got yourself some nice big upgraded furnaces then this is the guy you want around your base absolutely firing them up if it wasn't for that bonus work stuff he probably would be ranked a lot lower because that stamina really can make a difference but he is one of the fastest mounts that you'll get relatively early in the game but still towards the end of the 30s at level 37 you'll unlock his saddle you'll of course do a lot of fire damage while you're mounted on him and there's plenty of them over to the southwest in the lava zone. Next up, a really rare one that you won't be able to get unless you go ahead and breed some creatures or take a trip to the very northeastern preserve. It is, of course, Shadowbeak. He's definitely cool looking. He runs around at an incredible speed on the floor and obviously has good speed in the air. But it really is super strong in terms of its attacks. So definitely one if you really want a good attack power as well as being able to fly a lot of the pals melee attacks are around 100, 105 as a baseline damage. This guy is 130. And he's got a decent amount of stamina as well, 250. And of course it is a dark energy. The only problem is you won't be getting a saddle for it until you're level 47. And so a bit like Astragon, by the time you get to this level, do you really want to be utilizing resources or tech points to craft this saddle when you're so close to maybe one of the best in the game? I think the fire damage does elevate this guy and the fact that it is still speedy and has got a lot of stamina compared to Astragon makes it definitely worth being in the top 10. And if you want to breed one, then you absolutely have to get a Kitson and an Astagon, as I mentioned earlier, to go ahead and get these. 
Its work jobs do let it down though, with only gathering being the thing that you can get. A ferocious airborne fighter. At number 6th and 5th place, it is Suzaku and Suzaku Aqua. Nothing really separating these two in terms of where they are, just simply about what kind of element you might want with a little bit more power. These aren't as fast as Shadow Beak, with only 1100 as its top sprint speed. So a bit behind Ragnarok as well, but the stamina is what really sells this with that speed. 350, much larger than some of the other creatures. And they're relatively easy to get. The obviously fire versions you'll find all the way in the desert in the northeast. And with a kindling of three, it can definitely do a job, although it doesn't have any other work bonuses. It's true its attack and defense scores aren't exactly amazing either, they're just pretty average. And again, if it wasn't for the stamina, this would definitely be low a lot of the others. Unlock the saddle for the fire version at level 40, and then the aqua one at level 43. You have to make a Yaman Tide with a Suzuka to go ahead and get the aqua version. So unless you find a water egg, this is the only way via breeding. He'll come obviously with a water level of 3, but as pure flyers I don't think you can go wrong with these two as a really good sort of mid to late game creature. Number 4, Phalaris. Honestly, if it wasn't for this guy's maximum speed of being 1400, he definitely would have been a lot lower, because the rest of his stats just aren't that great. He's also pretty hard and tough to get, as you can only find him in the preserves all the way over to the northeast. But he does make a pretty good work fire creature as well, because he does have transport of three alongside kindling of three. Once you start unlocking it and getting its high level abilities, the Phoenix Flare is really particularly good. There's no doubt about it, it has got some powerful fire attacks. And the best thing, he's got a level 38 saddle, so you can get this guy relatively early for what is quite a fairly powerful and obviously the fastest or one of the fastest pals that isn't a direct overworld boss. So only three pals faster than these guys. If you don't want to trek all the way over to the preserve, you can go ahead and mate a Van Wim with an Anubis. And that's pretty much why I've put him so high. You can relatively get these early by mating them creatures. And then obviously, yeah, it is one of the fastest par bosses. Top three now, and number three is for a stallion, followed by its variant at number two for stallion knocked. Again, you could change these around if you really wanted to, but obviously the knocked version is a bit tougher to get hold of. So let's start with for a stallion. Obviously a ice pal and a overworld boss. There's no doubt about it, it's really tough to get. The boss is a hard fight, fighting it on a lake, having to dodge around a lot of the ice core pillars to try and avoid taking a lot of damage, or hopefully your pals do a lot of the work. And that is it, there's no other way to get one unless you're maybe very lucky with an egg. Both of these obviously have the same sort of stats in terms of speed, so they are the second fastest creatures in the game. But even better, when mounted, not only do your attacks do ice damage, but it converts all of your own attacks with your guns to ice damage. Both saddles unlock at level 47, so it is going to be a while before you get them. Visually, the Throw Stallion does do a bit better because it's larger, but equally, the dark version, the Noct, is going to give you more of them dark abilities. It will do exactly the same as well, converting all of your attacks to dark and doing more damage with dark. The only problem is, though, about this stage, how many creatures will you be facing off against that are weak to it? So for that reason, I probably would put the Throw Stallion just above it. To get the knock version, you have to mate the Throw Stallion with a Hellfire. But simply put, absolutely some of the fastest creatures in the game, whether it's running, absolutely sprinting, or just having a good amount of stamina with 300. But number one, of course, is Jet Dragon. I'm sure you guys know this already. Absolutely the fastest creature in the game, let alone just being a flying mount. Super powerful, your capture level to get this guy is going to have to be quite large using absolutely legendary spheres, you'll find it in the lava zone. Definitely still getting, worth getting at least, maybe a slightly earlier, even if you're not at max level to go and get the saddle which is level 50. Its stamina is really poor at only 100, so that is like as bad as some of the start ones, but when you go this fast you don't really need to care, because you'll simply be making up distance so quick. It's got a powerful rocket launcher as well that it can fire balls. And it's got dragon powers, so really good for taking on some of the toughest tower bosses where you'll need a lot of these special abilities. A fantastic reward for getting your character to max level, but how do you actually get him? On the far western side of the lava zone there will be a 
big plateau and he'll be hovering and flying around here. He is incredibly tough, it only takes a few hits from him and you could be brown bread unless you've got the best armour. As always I find, let the pals do the work and you maybe pepper in and around and hopefully you can take your pal away and try and get him at the last minute with the right sphere. You've got to be careful though because of some of the lava fields nearby, sometimes there's been some glitches where he's actually died from being just boosted by one of these rockets sent flying and somehow dies. And you certainly need to keep your distance away from some of these attacks. I've got to be completely honest, once you've got this guy, you'll never use another power again, unless it's specifically to take on certain bosses in the towers that don't respond well to dragon power. And there we go, every flyer in Power World ranked. Let me know your top three. Are you looking forward to seeing more being added? What could possibly top Jet Dragon in the future? I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of these style videos, taking a look at ground mounts, worker pals, and obviously overall the best pals to get. So make sure you subscribe, leave a like, and I'll see you rat bags later.